what's up friend today we are going to learn about character device and I would explain like what is a character device and how are you going to write character device and what is the necessity for everything being a file in Linux kernel and what are the different ways you can switch between kernel mode and user space mode so I would like to keep this discussion as short and concise as possible but at the same time I would like to give you as much details as possible so first thing why everything is a file in Linux so all these things came up from the main core thing which is security so let's suppose you assume that you have an operating system and that operating system works on a flat memory architecture in the sense there is no difference between kernel memory and user space memory so what would happen any user space program can access any of the other people's user program or maybe access a part of the operating system and can bring this entire system down so this is a basic security flaw so what Linux and most of the Unix came up with is that they divide the memory in terms of a memory which belongs to kernel only kernel can access and a part of memory which belongs to user space which kernel as well as user space both can access so how does this division works this division works by going into a different ring level so in x86 architecture and probably in other architectures also it's almost similar you have a di different ring levels which are supported from the hardware and what happens is you have like ring level 0 1 2 3 so what happens when you are in ring level 0 it means that you are in a most privileged mode and you can access any of the memory which are from ring level 1 and similarly if you are in ring level 1 you can access any of the memory belongs to ring level 2 so x86 has this 4 ring level whereas Linux only accesses just two of these ring levels so ring levels are a way to segregate or to tell which memory you can actually access based on certain instructions now the next thing so when Linux divides this memory into two parts like user space and kernel space so for a typical 4 gig memory it would be like 1 is to 3 so 1 GB will go to your kernel and 3 GB will go to your user space program so there are different ways to switch back and forth between user space and kernel space one is a standard set of system calls which are defined by the operating system which are defined by as a wrapper by the libc library on top of it so these are the only mechanisms you can go so let's suppose you want to do some task and that task requires some infrastructure or some code to run from the kernel so you cannot do directly what you do is you call a corresponding syscall and the syscall internally uses a software interrupt like 0x80 and switches over to the kernel mode so these are standard calls so in the sense like you cannot use your own call without changing the kernel so yes of course you can add a system call by changing a kernel but without changing the kernel you cannot do this except for the predefined set of system calls like uni like open close write open add those are the sets get tid those are the set of system calls using which you can switch from kernel mode to user mode the other way to do that is file system so file system has this peculiar features that if you write something to a file both user space and kernel space can access it provided it has the right kind of privilege and all those things so those are on top of device driver device driver does not basically deals with privileges and everything as such but on top of drivers you will have the policies which deals with those kinds of things so as of now we are discussing about the ways of communication so what happens is the entire core of Linux has been written using file system architecture in the sense it will treat everything as a file and that file using those set of APIs you can access from the user space so what I mean by that is let's suppose you are in a kernel space and you want to send a data to the user space so kernel can create a file and also expose a set of APIs to access those files and it can write data to that file 
and from the user space using a set of interface or maybe in from the user space using the system calls you can access the content of that file so that's one of the very basic media of communications and it is followed throughout the Linux kernel so let's go quickly to the file system architectures not exactly architecture but the structures of file systems in Linux kernel which is very famous and which is one of the core of the Linux kernel so here we have this structures this is present in include Linux if you are if you have the Linux source code so like let's suppose if the source code is in user src kernel then inside that source code go to the include and Linux folder there will be like fs and fs.h file would be there so this fs has this structure called file underscore operations and if you look into this it has various kind of operations which you can do on a file like seek for seeking to set an offset read write asynchronous read asynchronous write iterate mmap open flush release aio fsync so all these kind of signatures are present in this particular structure so what are you gonna do for a device driver to for a character device so before that I would also like to point out that in Linux there are two kinds of devices which we follow which we have is character device and block device and everything else is either a subset or a small subset of these two main architectures and the other architecture is networking which does not follow a file system analogy as such and it is a stream based so that is different so for these two we will have either a character or a block device character device are like set of data which is coming as a stream like a data from a keyboard data from a mouse or a data from a joystick those are like a stream of data which comes and once you receive the data that data is kind of lost or you cannot navigate back and forth between the data let's suppose you get a keystroke and keystroke from the keyboard and that will come as an interrupt you receive that data and after that you want to navigate back to that you don't know what is that it doesn't make sense for those kind of situations but for hard drive you ha you can navigate to certain offsets in the hard drive like you can go to like offset 0 of the hard drive will be a 0 or it will be a 100 or it will be a 1000 or to the end of the hard drive so you can navigate back and forth between different LBS in the hard drive so those kind of devices are block devices so anything which is have which in which you want to navigate back and forth goes to that go to the different offset that will be treated as a block device secondly block devices are faster devices mostly and character devices are slow devices so that being the introduction we will open our character device driver which I have kept it here so this drivers basically doesn't have much it just have the same basic skeleton so if you are if you have not done the module programming yet or if you are not familiar with the module I will tell you to go to the module programming first and that would help you in case if you don't have it I have the link for you here you can quickly go and see one of my link for uh, module programming in Linux so that is Linux kernel model programming so you can go and read from here also you can re refer any articles you feel comfortable with and you can also read system calls in Linux this might help you in developing a system call adding a new system call into Linux kernel so now let's go so basically our drivers has again two same two main methods one is a init method which is a skeleton for like all the driver models like you need to have an init method and then we have a exit method so now in init method what we need to do is we need to create a device node so when we say device node in the sense a device consists of a major number and minor number so I'll quickly tell you what is a major number and a minor number major number is an identifier using which you can identify a device uniquely in the system so two devices cannot have the same set of major number and minor number same set in the sense let's suppose if the device major number is 100 and the minor number is 0 so the other device cannot have a 100 comma 0 it can have 100 comma 1 or 100 comma 2 now when I say cannot have 
yes of course you can put another device also as 100 comma 0 but then all the device name which you have put as 100 comma 0 will be treated as just one single device not a separate device so we can come to that part also so this is a major number and minor number now if you want linux kernel gives a set of major number and minor numbers in cat slash proc slash devices it gives a list of devices which it is using currently so below list are for like block devices and if you go up on this cat slash proc device slash devices proc slash devices you see a set of devices which a character device so like see device 1 is being used by memory device 4 is being used by vc tty and similar so here you see i don't have a device 100 so in my program i am using a major number 100 so and minor number you can give on your own and there is no such restrictions but make sure it's always unique so that two devices don't interfere having the same major number or minor number otherwise there will be a conflict and when i mean by conflict what i mean exactly is a interrupt for one device might be read for another and the other device might be waiting or might uh, reread the interrupt again so there might be a duplicate read or read being lost so those kind of problems can happen so there is this api for all the character device which is called as register cad region and whenever you want to use a character device this is the api which you have to call so there are other apis also like allocad region we which we will cover in another session but this session we are sticking to uh, statically assigned major number and minor number when i say statically that means you are computing by hand and putting it you don't know at runtime what is it so if you want to calculate this at runtime so there is a api for this which we will cover later so now register cad region is the one in which you can say okay i will have my major number so this mkdev is a macro which basically does a massaging of major number and minor number to create a unique number and you get a my dev it's just a number and it this second parameter tells how many device node you want if i say two that means two node would be created that means 100 comma 0 100 comma 1 would be created if i say 3 100 comma 0 100 comma 1 100 comma 3 so if i say 1 it will be just 100 comma 0 and dev name is a device name you can give anything and I, my device name i'm giving as shakil k1729 and this device will should appear in slash dev so linux understands slash dev for all the device nodes no not other places then what is the next then next we have this structure c my dev and this structure c my dev is basically nothing but it first does allocation so we will not go much into that allocation is just a memory allocation so it doesn't do much of that but the next in interesting thing is a c dev in it so what it does is it takes uh, one pointer one some you can say in a very very layman term it's a buffer and in that buffer what happens is it is, tries to map it with the device operations which you want to do now let's go to before i uh, this i would like to go for device operation so like i said every device is like a file and file has this operations like read write and everything so you define a set of operations which you want to do so here i define like i wanted to do a write open and read for my program so and the this is what i have declared in a structure and i have written a corresponding device underscore write device underscore open here is my declarations so in device open you need not do anything for this small program but for larger programs you would like to have a synchronizations like you can have some kind of a locking here to say okay this device is being used and let's suppose if you want your device to be used by just one driver at a time you can have those kind of lockings or maybe if you want your device to be used by multiple persons then also you can have another kind of lockings wherein you can lock the data buffer or you can just do a spin lock and sit tight so that there is no uh, overwriting of read or write by different uh, kernel threads device write the signature of device write again you can derive from like the one which i have shown you the source code for linux kernel like it's a it accepts a type of file star and the buffer user space buffer which i wanted to write which uh, and then the size of that buffer 
and the position of that buffer so device underscore right will be called from will be called when from the user space you say right or f right device underscore read will be called when from the user space you say f and f read or read so what this basically do is okay is it takes the buffer from this user space which is buffer and you want to write and it will write to my buffer which is in a kernel so this buffer buffer is i have defined in kernel which is a page size 1034 1024 sorry and then we have this interesting set of api copy from user and then here you can see copy to user so copy from user means i will copy the buffer from the user space so i will copy this buffer from the user space to the buffer position to the buffer in my kernel space and of course i have to set the positions because next time if i am copying i have to increment that buffer positions because otherwise it will keep on writing at the start of the buffer so because of that i have added the positions which we get as an offset in the size of the buffer so copy to buffer is an interesting api which you should remember learn and try to do some more programming and then the other is copy to user copy to user is reverse from copy from user what copy to user means i have this buffer in my kernel space and you this buffer would be copied to buff and this is what i will pass to user space user space can take this buffer and do whatever you, they wish to do so these are the three apis which i have written and i have written okay the corresponding i fill up the structures write read and open then let's go to my c dev init so in c dev init like we were saying that we have a structure and it just binds to like device underscore operations that what all the operations i wanted to do next what we do is we call a method called cdev underscore add and what cdev add does is whatever device operations we got it will map it to the corresponding my device my device is the device name which we got as a i know so we defined a set of operations which we want to do and then we separately defined uh mk device node and then we map them together using cdev underscore add and this is bounded so like let's suppose dev underscore shakil dev slash shakil k1729 is a device and then a set of operation is like read write and open so we map that this particular device uses these three functions calls uh, these three functions and here i just do a mem set which is a kernel space mem set which means that i will initialize it to null or zero whatever it is and then in driver exit i just do a dev cdev uh, delete because i have allocated a memory here and then i will do a unregister cat every gen so it will basically unallocate those uh, major number and minor number and whatever infrastructure it has created so it's a very short program and since i have been going back and forth about this code so i would like to go to the start of this code and scroll slowly so that you have a chance to copy this code and run it on your system so i hope that would help try this code in your system and if it helps that would be really good i've just given a comment also about these functions that's not needed you can remove it so that is all about the code now let's go and try to play play with this code so i have this here a module cat driver dot ko and i don't have any module as of now in my system so if i say ls minus mod pipe ls mod pipe to grep minus i cat i don't have a cat drive so i will say ins mod and i will say this copy and paste now if i go in small i have this module being inserted next we have to create a device node so remember we when we said like we have to statically create we can do that dynamically but in this program i'm showing you statically in the next video i'll show you how to do it dynamically so if you see here in devs ls cell dev there is no such called shakil so what you say is you create a node called shakil k1729 exact same name which you have given in the program and it is mk node mk node is used for creating a device node if you wish you can read more from this major number and minor number and in this also you can get some of the details about mk node and how to create a device node and the type is c for character device 
or b for block device so c i will give and 100 is the major numbers 0 is the minor number now if i see this device i can see that it is my character device by c and these are the major number and minor number and this is my device name you can also see other devices like dev tty s0 or 1 1 3 whatever you see it's a character device major number is 4 minus number is 13 and this is the device name so similarly that i have created a device now since we have this device which is being created and this device is being used by our module so this becomes like a common media of communication between my user space and kernel space you will see a lot of drivers like this doing operations like this it's a fantastic way of treating everything as a file so now i if i say cat dev shakil k1729 there's no data of course it's a new device now if i say echo hello to dev slash shakil k and if i say then cat dev shakil k so this you see it's exactly being treated as a file so what happens when you say echo to a file something and then you can read back from a file and that's what's happening and the data is going traveling to the kernel and coming all the way back from the kernel you see data send to application is 4096 bytes data received from app hello you can see that data is being received and sent from the kernel so that's the way you treat a character device it's very simple read some books and that would help now let's suppose i said that it should not match any other device uh, in terms of major number and minor number what would happen if i say mk node again with a different device node let's suppose i say one more c add what would happen now if i say now cat dev shakil k17291 you see i am getting the exact same data why because when i have given the same major number and minor number it should not be same so two device having the same major number and minor number would be treated as just one device so so that's the reason and sometimes like it's a device data is some something like it can be read only once so what will happen is once you read from shakil k17291 then the device the data is lost then you cannot read from shakil k17291 so if you have that kind of device so that's the reason you should have only one device with the same set of major number and minor number so that's one way of kernel communication the other way of kernel communication is through a syscall and what happens in a syscall is basically you go to the kernel mode by using an interrupt so let's take it with an example so in our case i have this example open system call so what happens when you say open open has a wrapper internally which calls which is a sysopen and sysopens what happens is it has a defined like in which uh, vectors or this particular system calls belongs to so when you have that this syscall underscore define generates interrupts 0x80 and it wraps all the arguments onto the registers like ex ebx ecx those six registers if you are not sure about those registers i would say read somewhere about uh, registers eax ebx ecx those are particularly very important for linux kernel and then once it generates an interrupt 0x80 it goes into the kernel mode the interrupt is meant for kernel mode the processors and everything they understand that 0x80 that has been meant for for x86 so i have this small call how to do that so one way is like let's suppose you want to get a TID. TID get TID is a very unique call in system in the sense you doesn't have a system call get TID wrapper, but you can use syscall. So syscall and say sys underscore get TID. If you run this program and if you say the thread ID, so TID is basically a thread ID. For a normal process, the PID and the thread ID are the same, but if you keep on doing a P thread then even though the process id would be the same thread id for each of those individual threads would be different so you can print the thread, thread id like this tid is equal to syscall sys underscore get tid so let's print this very quickly i think i have it here not this one so i will say gcc test syscalls.c so see my process id was thread id was sorry 3994 
and my PID was also this. So this was my process ID and the same as the thread ID. Had this been P thread, I would have got a different TID. So this particular call doesn't have a system call wrapper. It just uses the raw syscall. This is what everyone uses like sys underscore open is for open call. So but for open you have this open call just open. So you can say open and then do a, a name of the file and mode. But for syscall there is no get TID functions. If you say man get TID, you see that they have added this wrappers I believe very recently but uh, get tid there is no glibc wrapper for this system so there is no glibc so that means even if you call like this it will not work so what you have to do is you have to say get tid like this sys underscore get tid so this calls directly now if there would have been open call the way you say man open man to open so i'm referring to this call open so it would be like sys underscore open and of course you have to pass the argument and everything so this is the way it calls the sys open so it automatically packs the arguments and does everything for you and once it goes to the sys underscore open it goes into the kernel mode and from the kernel mode the kernel can send the data using through like copy to user that api or it can write to a file and of course if you have the access and that file uh, system driver has is exposing that file to the user API the user gets the file so in our case we have this file already being created and of course creation of the file itself takes some system calls so those are other details like when, whenever I am calling a MK node MK node itself is calling one system call to create a node that system node is going to the kernel the kernel is creating this node so those things are there so now let's assume that if this node is already there so what happens is as we say echo greater than echo hello one two three whatever and dev shakil k so what this exactly translates to when you say echo and it's going to this uh, redirecting to dev that means you are actually doing a write so this translates to write call and write internally calls sys underscore write and from the sys call sys underscore write using uh, vectors for the system calls it switches over to the kernel mode and sends the data to the kernel now this is done when we read the data what exactly happening is this call calls read functions which wraps as sys underscore read and from sys underscore read there is a generate uh, it generates an interrupt the interrupt lands you into the kernel mode the kernel wraps the data and sends you back as copy to user so this is the way you do that so if i do that cat i get the data so this is how it works now if you want to know about more about system calls in fact i have this you can learn more about system calls here i have the process how to how you can implement a system call in linux kernel and i i'm sure that is going to help you in your long run how to compile a kernel like submit a patch you can read these how to compile a kernel part one part two and I'm not sure whether I have exceeded the time. I, I wanted to make this as a single video. But yesterday I have trouble uploading 159 minutes video and it was not uploading. In case if it is not uploading, if it's not there, I might break this into multiple videos. So thank you all for watching. And if you like it, please subscribe or, uh, and give a thumbs up.